As with most of our accounting settings in WAVE, we're going to start creating our products by going to the gear icon in the upper right of the main page. Click on the gear and select products. Now you can see that I have not created a product yet for this particular company, so I want to start by clicking add a product. This is the Add a Product page. We'll start by adding a name for the product. This name is a short description that shows up on the invoice that helps you and the customer know what exactly the product is. It's also the item that you're going to be selecting when deciding which products to put on your invoice or bill. So typically speaking, if this is a physical, tangible product that you're selling, the name is likely going to be the SKU, barcode, or item ID for that particular product. If this is a service, then likely the name is going to be a very short description of what that service is. In this case, I'm going to say that my product is a consulting fee. So I'm going to come down here and just say consulting fee. Now the description is where you have the opportunity to provide more information to your customer on the invoice as to what exactly this service or product entails. If you're selling a physical tangible product and you've used the SKU as the name, then in the description you can add a better description of what exactly it is that they're buying, something that the customer is probably going to recognize more fully. If you're providing a service, then Likely the service is already described in the name, but in the description you can add a lot more characters, a lot more text to help more fully describe what this item is. So here, consulting fee is fairly well described. I'm just going to add that this is an hourly consulting fee in the description. In the price, we want to label whatever the price is that we're actually selling the product for. So if it's a product, that should be fairly obvious. We'll know what we're selling the product to the customer for. If it's a service, it's going to depend on whether this is a variable rate service or a fixed rate service. So for example, in photography, I might charge you a fixed rate for a photo shoot. Maybe it's $50 a session. Right? And it doesn't matter if that session is 15 minutes long or half an hour long, it's going to be $50. Or if I'm doing like a wedding or something like that, I might charge an hourly rate. And so this is my price of what one hour of that service is going to cost. And then on the invoice, I can specify how many hours of service I actually provided. So in this case, this is a variable rate service that I'm creating. It's an hourly consulting fee. So my price is simply going to be the price per hour. In this case, I'm going to say it's $75 an hour. The next two boxes are going to help WAVE understand whether or not we sell the product, buy the product, or both so that it can set up the accounting settings correctly. Whether you buy or sell your product really depends on the type of business that you're in. In some cases, you may sell and not buy, in others, you might buy and not sell. And in some, you may both buy and sell. It really just depends on your situation. For example, with services, typically speaking, services are sold but never purchased because you're just giving of your time. However, sometimes you're giving someone else's time. Maybe you're subcontracting some of your services out. For example, I have a customer that works in landscaping and he subcontracts all of the snow removal. So in that case, he is both buying someone's time to do snow removal and turning around and selling that time back to a customer. So in that case, he is both buying and selling a service. Typically speaking, however, we typically only sell a service. With products, oftentimes we're buying and reselling that product. So in that case, you would both buy and sell the particular physical products that you're selling. That's usually the best scenario for tangible products in WAVE. However, sometimes maybe you're manufacturing a product. You're hand making something that you want to sell. 
In that case, you've never actually purchased it, you're only selling it. There are some instances, though, when you have physical product you buy but never sell. A good example of this would be a bakery. Let's say that I'm in the industry of making wedding cakes. In that case, I have certain ingredients like flour that I buy to make my cakes, but I never actually sell flour to anyone. I sell a finished cake. So, I might create a product for flour so that I can put it on a bill, but I'm not going to actually sell it. And on the other side, I'm going to create a cake product that I can sell and put on an invoice, but I'm never actually going to buy. So you need to take just a minute to think about the different products that you use in your business, whether they're tangible products or just services, and decide whether or not these are items that you're going to be buying, selling, or both. You can see here that when I check the box for sell, the option for an income account appears so that I can tell it which income account to put this product to every time an invoice for this product is created. Also, if I check the box for buy this, then it allows me to select an expense account to indicate which expense this product is going to every time that I put it on a bill. For this particular product, since it is a service, I'm not really going to be buying this service, so I'm going to uncheck that box. And I am going to be selling it, so I want to create, an, or I want to assign an income account to it, and I already have a consulting income account created, so I can select that one. The last thing to add to this product is going to be the tax rate that is likely going to be charged. This is going to be the default tax rate for this particular product, and will automatically appear on the invoice attached to this product every time it's sold. In this case, for a consulting fee in the state of Utah, I don't have to charge any sales tax for consulting, so I would not need to put anything in this tax rate box. However, if I wanted to, I could come down and select either of my tax rates that I created previously, or I could even select both of them if I needed to, if this was a grouped tax rate, like we discussed when we created sales tax um, items in the previous video. Now, bear in mind that this is going to set this up as a default for all of your products. If you typically only work in one state or one area, then this is going to be a really good idea. If you sell on the internet, or you sell in multiple different states or jurisdictions where this tax rate is constantly changing from transaction to transaction, then you may not want to create a default tax rate for this particular product and instead add the tax rates manually to each invoice as necessary. In this case, as I said, this is a service, so I don't need the tax rate, so I'm not going to create it. At this point, the product is now ready to be saved, so I'm going to save my product, and I've added an additional product into Wave. If I wanted to create a physical, tangible product, like we discussed before, I can come up and add an additional product. We'll use a SKU, so maybe it's SBDVD-1, Small Business Training DVD. I sell it, let's say I sell it for $19.95, and I'm going to both sell and buy this DVD. Now that we're looking at a product that is going to be both bought and sold in WAVE, I wanted to bring up one of the nuances of working with inventory in WAVE Accounting. As you can see, when you select to both buy and sell, it allows you drop-down lists to identify specific accounts for both scenarios, but it doesn't allow you to change the price in both scenarios. In WAVE Accounting, the price that appears on your invoice is also the same price that will appear on your bills. Wave assumes that you sell your products for the same price as what you purchase them for. But I can tell you that if you sell your products at the same price you buy them at, you won't be in business very long. So, we're going to have to find a way around this. Here is what I recommend. On the product page, put the price that you're going to be selling it to your customer. That way, when you create an invoice, the right price is always automatically created. 
it is less likely that we'll make a mistake on a bill than we will on an invoice because the vendor is checking up on us and because we have a physical piece of paper that we can typically tie to for that bill. That isn't the case with invoices. So we want to make sure that our invoice is always accurate. For that reason, we're going to be putting the sales price in the price section on the product page. However, when we get to bills, you'll see that we'll need to override that price every time with the bill. I recommend when using bills in WAVE that you have the physical paper bill in front of you, and when you're finished creating the, the bill in WAVE, you can tie that bill back to the paper copy to make sure that it's right. That will help prevent errors but you are always going to have to override the price on the bills because WAVE does not allow two different fields for both the cost and the price. Again, the last step is to set up my tax rate. In this case, I'm going to assign both my state and my local tax rate because I'm, this is going to be in a grouped rate area, and I'm going to save this product. And it's going to remind me that I haven't set up my income and my expense account. That's what happens when we get in a hurry, right? So I'm going to set it up as a product sale. And for my expense, in this case, I don't see the expense account that I actually want to set up. There is nothing here for purchase of product. So this is an example where I can create a new account for this particular transaction. And WAVE makes it very convenient. I don't have to leave this screen to create my account. I can simply click on the plus button to the right of the account dropdown for either income or expense and create a new account. So I'm going to do that for my expense here. And I'm going to call this a cost of goods sold because it is a cost related to the sale of my product. As we discussed previously, And I'm going to call this Purchase Resale Items. And then I'm going to rename it to be Product Purchases. And then Save. And now my Product Purchases is in my expense account. I've met all of the errors that it identified for me, so I can save the product again. And now it's fully saved. I now have my consulting fee. I also have my DVD. And that is how you can create services and products in WAVE that you can use on your invoices and your bills. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to WAVE Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue creating more videos like this one for you and other WAVE users here on the Accounting Lab.